you need to pray. We need to hear the spirit of the Lord. We, hear, we need to hear what God is saying, yeah. right? So God is calling us to, for this Elisha mantle. And I wrote here, the fear of the Lord, that we walk in the fear of the Lord, not fear of man, not worried about what man's going to say. Does it line up with the word? That's what I'm concerned about. That's why we have to vote. I'm, listen, I'm going to just say this. God is not Republican. He's not Democrat. He's the Lamb of God, right? And it's whoever we vote righteously. Whoever's standing for the word of God, period. Not because of color, not because of ethnicity. We vote because of who's standing righteously. And so we have a fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is that we want God to break through all the junk that's out there. My God, it's crazy. Spiritual hunger instead of complacency. Obedience, holiness, total trust and dependence upon the Lord, a hatred for sin, humility instead of pride, right? And so obviously they called down the fire and, and it burned up, you know, the, what Elisha put out there and they took out the prophets of Baal, right? And that's what the Lord is doing. The, the idolatry, the prophets of Baal that have been out there, it's, you know, for them. Now I'm not talking about human beings. <laughs> I'm talking about the spirit realm, Okay. We may want to. No, I'm going to kid. Anyway, so in James 5, 17, listen, it says, Elisha was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings, affection, and a constitution like ours. And he prayed earnestly. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to read the other scripture first. Sorry. All right, we'll go back to that. James 5, 15, 16, and the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick, and the Lord will restore him. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And it says, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. And the earnest, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man avails much, okay? Or a continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. Okay, now. 517, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as all of us, with feelings, affections, and a constitution of ours. And he prayed earnestly, for it did not rain, and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again, and heaven supplied rain, and the lands produced its crops as usual. Elijah wasn't special. He's not any special than we are. And God has planned for you and I to have that same power through prayer. He wants us to speak to the weather. He wants us to speak over our region, to speak over our family, that our household is a house of Obadiah, a house of miracles, right? That we see ourselves and say, Lord, we have your presence here. We thank you that in this season of 5783 uh, of, the, of Gimel, it's, it's uh, your abundant provision. My garden, my garden in my home is fruitful. One of the words is garden for this season. See, the Lord is speaking to us. But, do you, you know, again, it's like, okay, Lord, you're speaking to us, but what are you doing with what he's saying? Are you grabbing hold of it that, that Lord, I believe your word. I am speaking this. I am tired of going around this mountain over and over again. He's saying, come out off that mountain. It's time for us to get off that mountain. Wherever that, if we're stuck, it's time to get off. And just say, Lord, I am going to stand here. I am standing. When you look up that word in Ephesians 6.10, where it says, when you've done all to stand, stand. That word, when you look up stand, it means to stand on the covenant promises of God. When you've done all to stand, Lord, I am standing. And I'm not budging until I see the breakthrough. Until step by step you give me the strategy. Rather than blaming everybody else for it, let's, let's take ownership of our own stuff and see, well, where are we at with our faith, right? Because God is saying to us, he wants us to develop our faith into a greater place. And so, um, and that word avail there means to have power or force and to exercise great power. So God wants us to have mountain moving faith. So let me just read this and I'm going to close. In Matthew 17, 14 through 20 in the New Living, it says, At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and he said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire and into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't heal him. And Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people. How long must I be with you? Now, you, you think Jesus was concerned about hurting your feelings? <laughs> you know, he, he just told you where it was at, right? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. And then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy, and it left him. And from that moment, the boy was well. 
Afterwards, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast it out? He said, well, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here and there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. And he said, but because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say this, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, move from here and there. I just read that. So unbelief there means unfaithfulness, mistrust, lack of faith, negative belief, lack of confidence, and power. All right? So there's one thing of having doubt. It's another thing of unbelief. Doubt is we're, we're still trying to get there. Lord, I believe, but help like that guy. Help my unbelief. You know, I, I really want to get to this place of breakthrough. And so there is a faith that moves mountains. And this faith requires maturity. It requires us to grow and not stay limited with where we're at, okay? And so the Lord is calling us to grow our faith. And so faith means trust, confidence, and certainty. Listen, Elijah was walking in this, this mountain-moving faith, right? And so but he's a man like us. And so words, our words of faith activate these seeds, all right? Keep speaking life over that. And so we have, there's little faith, there's small faith, and there's great faith. And so I said, well, Lord, I want great faith in every area of my life. I don't want, well, you know, I'm good here, but here I'm not so good, but that's okay. No, I want great faith, great faith. And, and it comes through meditating on the word. We can't allow our faith to grow dormant because of disappointment, because of delay. I hate delay. But... God's not into delay. There's delay for a season. It tests our faith, different things. There's different reasons why we have delay. But I'm not going to allow my faith to get dormant, right? And so uh, Jesus, you know, what about when Jesus got up and he spoke to the winds and he commanded them? He was asleep in the boat and the guys were all freaking out in the water. I mean, I probably would have been too. I hate being in the boat. I hate the water, you know, all that. And so he's like, again, you guys of little faith. So he wasn't that he was putting them down. He's trying to encourage them. Listen. This is where you're at. And they listen, think about it. They hung out with Jesus. They hung out with Jesus. And he's saying, listen, I, this is the word of the Lord. I want to help you in this time to get to great mountain-moving faith, lion-like creatures of the Lord, where we decree that thing and it shatters. Now, it's not that it's not happening, but I'm talking about this, like we're seeing it like this, right? And so, but it comes from our standing, our tenacity, our persistence in not giving up and not being disheartened. And then we make excuses as to why it doesn't happen, right? And so, I mean, we've all been there, but no more. The Lord says, I am anointing you. I'm activating today the I am that I am in you, the breaker, the one who loves you with an everlasting love that wants this breakthrough more than you realize. But I want that mountain-moving faith. And he says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. This is a good thing. You can stand. Holy Spirit wants us to know that we have that mountain-moving, seed-breaking, anointed, courageous, more than a conqueror faith within us. Amen? So I'm going to pray. And then my husband's going to share something. Or you want to share something first? Okay, so Lord, I just thank you that you said to me that you were activating the mantle of Elisha upon us. And so, Lord, I say yes to you. I say yes to you. We say yes, oh God. Lord, forgive us for doubt, unbelief. Forgive us for where we've tried to understand you. We can't understand you. We just submit to you and obey you. But Lord, I thank you that you are activating the seed that's already within us. This mantle of Elisha, like, like it's, it's Jesus Christ. But, I mean, I'm, what I'm talking is that he was a man like uh, us. And so it, it all comes down from Jesus. But this, this mountain-moving, uh, breaker, powerful, resurrection life anointing, Father, we just thank you that you're activating it in each and every one of us. Just lay hands on yourself. Just say, I am anointed with a mantle like Elisha that breaks through, doesn't back down, back down, is courageous and more than a conqueror. And I thank you, Lord, that this is my turnaround season. I'm not just saying words. I am decreeing it, and it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen.
got one. I think this will work. So I just feel like it's important that the two of us are here together because when we get married, two become one, right? And while we were sitting, while I was sitting there and Trisha was speaking, the Lord just kind of played a video before me of the last 37 years that we've been married and prior to that, because I know the story that Trisha went through. And um, There's an authority when you get through something and you come out the other side to help other people. And she used this word activate several times just now, right? And, and that might just kind of pass through your mind, but Paul said it this way, I want to, I want to, I desire to, to be with you because I want to impart a spiritual gift to you. So I'm going to just call it the the special forces anointing that Trisha has on her life. The one percenter, the Navy SEAL, the person who will not quit. When I tell you, will not quit. And the Father is really pleased, and I know you know that I know that about you, but there's something for all of us here, and I think if we both stand here together as one, because I picked up on it, she's picked up on some things for me, good things, hopefully, for both of us, but that's what happens when you get married, you become one, and, and then you, you just start to realize, this girl is serious. Like, she will really not quit no matter what. Like, I'm glad I was smart enough to marry her before somebody else figured this out. Because this is a life or death thing. Okay? So this isn't some joke. Like, this, if, if I could show you the scenes in, in the movie, I won't. But many people would have bailed along the way. Right? I said this recently. How long does it take the average person to be a Navy SEAL? The average person will never be an ABC. <laughs> All right. Don't, don't want to be average. That's not your goal is to be average, right? We're all going to be pressing towards the mark for the prize. So she can knows how to pray. But I would like her just to release that tenacity that you saw and you'll continue to see because she's very comfortable in her own skin. That's a big part of this is like, you know what? This is who I am. You don't like it. You'll get used to it or you'll find another place, <laughs> right? <laughs> because... This is who God made me to be, and I'm going to be all that he made me to be. So just lift your hands, and I don't know how you want to do it, but I just really feel like you could release something, and, and, and that you would receive an activation and an impartation of a warrior spirit. I, I just have to say this. The warrior spirit comes from meditating on the word. And, and as you meditate on the word, that's what causes the warrior to rise up within you, because right. Jesus Christ is the word. Right. And, and the whole time you're talking, I know our church knows this, but for those of you that don't, when, when, we were, when I was giving birth to my second son, the doctor said that my son was dead. And the word was so alive in us. We said, no, it's not. And, of course, I wanted Peter to punch the doctor in the face, but he didn't. But, that, um, wasn't, that wasn't the word right there. No, that wasn't the word, but he was aggravating me because he kept speaking against the promise. After the baby gets delivered, then you can punch yeah. him in the face, but so, you still need him. Um, anyway, I just said, punch him in the face, and so he wouldn't. But anyway, but it was the tenacity of the word because day and night I meditated on the word. I'm telling you, it's the word. word. It's, not, I'm not, it's the word. And, and they said that my son was dead. And, you know, the doctors are just men. But God had a final plan. Oh, yeah. And, and, and as they were scrubbing and they said they were going to give me surgery, and I said, I'm not getting it. I'm not having a C-section. I told God I'm not having one. As they were scrubbing, I started pushing, and I gave birth. And I didn't get a C-section. That's the power of the word. It was day and night. Joshua 1, 8 or 9 says, meditate on the word day and night. Therein you will have good success and you will prosper. That's the power of the word. Not just me reading the word every now and again. It's getting the word like a bulldog, biting onto that and not letting go. So, Lord, I just thank you that we're all warriors. We have it within us. It's not trying to get it. We are more than conquerors. But, Father, I decree and declare a hunger for your word like never before, that they will meditate. We will all increase that and meditate on the word day and night, oh, God, for a breakthrough. For those I keep, I keep hearing the Lord say, there are people here that have been struggling with addictions, and you've been going round and round and around, and you almost feel hopeless hopeless because you're trying. But the Lord says today is your day of breakthrough. We break this addiction struggle off of you in Jesus' name.
The Lord says it's not that you have to keep going through this over and over. He who the sun sets free is made free indeed. Now, Lord, I just speak to that thing, and I say dry up in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you that, Lord, we are warriors, and, Lord God, that your word sets us free. It's the revelation of the truth of the word that sets us free. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the revelation. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the word. And as we meditate on the word and as we we, uh, metastasize that word within us, oh God, we see the fruit of what we have sown, the seeds of faith that are planted that causes harvest. In Jesus' name, amen.